Uh, but we'll start with the basic tutorial. We'll start from the very beginning and see where this game takes us. Automa Chef T1 basic tutorial. Three orders have to be fulfilled. Power usage has to be left uh, less than 500 watt hours. I assume is what that is, WH. Uh, fewer than 50 ingredients. Our budget is $40,000 and we have to prepare a simple, lonely hamburger. Beautiful. Hello there, fellow human being. Thank you for responding to my advertisement, helping me in setting up my new restaurant chain. My plan is to use fully autonomous kitchens to cut costs and crush mankind. <coughs> I mean, efficiently produce wholesome, tasty dishes. The kind humans like us love to digest. But before we start on our first restaurant, we need to prove the concept. I've rented this test site for us to use. Follow my instructions and let's make this business Let's make sure this business plan of mine is feasible. There we go. It's kind of hard to read as they move like this. Uh, we can pan the camera with WASD and we can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. Fantastic. We can use C and X to rotate. Oh my goodness. I actually didn't know you could do that. You can't rotate all the way. You can only rotate like one tick off the axis like this. I'm also going to turn that down just a little bit. That sound effect is a little high there. I'm also going to bring this music down just a tad bit more as well. It's a little, it's it's lovely, don't get me wrong, but it's a little loud. And the sound effect volume come down to like 15 as well. There we go. GUI sound effects. There are 75 or 85 right now. I think we can bring those down though, like there. Uh, so I've got this, continue. Let's start by making a very simple kitchen that can only make plain burgers. We'll start placing an assembler, a machine that combines ingredients into a finished dish. So this guy over here is the assembler. I will click the assembler and then we can place it down. Uh, it's not uh, I, I might use the scroll wheel like this far too often because in Satisfactory, you use the scroll wheel to rotate. Uh, I'm going to use Q and E here to rotate. So we want this guy on the arrows on the floor. Great. Now we've got an assembler. We can select the plain burger. So in here, boom, plain burger, easy. Manufacturing time is five seconds. And uh, there are also some other like little bits here that we can come to in the future, like output mode, where does the dish go on the left side, on the right side, and then operation mode. Um, right now it doesn't say anything, but later on down the line, you can choose whether or not you want your machines to run in energy efficient mode, normal mode, or I think like overclocked mode, something like that, where energy efficient mode uses less power, but makes it slower. And the like overclock mode will make it super fast, but will use like a ton of power to do it. And so, Later on, you'll have certain missions that have certain objectives, like you've got to get, you know, 50 burgers out the door, but you've got to stay under 500 megawatts. And so uh, much like other games in this genre, it does also have that element of like customer satisfaction where the customers will be like green for a while, where they're happy with the time they're waiting. Uh, the longer you take, the kind of more orangey it gets. They get a bit dissatisfied. They're not really too happy with uh, how long things are taking. And then towards the end, it gets red. Like they're angry. They're annoyed at how long it's taken them. Like flipping, heck, I just want my burger. Gosh dang it. And so you kind of have to balance that, right, with the efficiency of your machines. Like by default, you could just set it to energy efficient, but if that's not fast enough for the people wanting the burger, you've got to speed it up. Uh, but if speeding it up increases the power usage, then you've got to cut corners somewhere else. There's some puzzle management to it, but that's not what this is about just yet. We'll click OK and we'll move on to the next part of the uh, tutorial here. Before we place any more machines, let's have a look at the recipe to see what we need. OK, so we have the recipe button, which is up here. Extremely simple recipe, a burger bun and a raw pate, which we're going to turn into a cooked pate and then out into a regular burger. MFG time, five seconds. Is this manufacturing time? Is that what MFG means? Is this some like nomenclature that I'm not aware of? Do people use MFG time? It sounds like a time zone, right? MFG time, Madagascar farm time. I don't know what that would be, but okay, this is fine. There are some machines we can use to dispense, cook and transport the ingredients. Close the recipe tab by pressing the OK button. Okay. Select the dispenser in the parts list and place two of them. The locations have been marked for me. Mm, okay. So we want these all the way over here. Boom and boom. These guys are going to dispense our ingredients. For example, we would like to dispense burger buns. Right now, five per second is okay. Again, later on down the line, we can fine tune this to be as, as good as or as bad as possible, I guess. And then this guy right here, we're going to go ahead and set to raw patty like so. Um, it does say click the OK button, and this says there is no OK button. There's an OK button, but I, it's fine. OK, if you're watching game devs, that needs changing. But uh, so now we've got our raw patties, and then we need to grill these raw patties. So the patties are coming out of this bottom one here. We're going to place this guy right here. We can rotate this. I don't think there's any benefit to doing so, but I'll place it like this just for my uh, mild OCD there. Great work. Let's move on to the, uh, let's get the ingredients moving. We've got conveyor belts. Nice. $250 a piece and they use 150 megawatts. They're quite expensive then. Uh, so boom, boom. And I believe we want to rotate this one. Oh, no, we don't. We want this one to go 
straight forward here into the assembler. This guy is going to go straight onto the grill, but you can't actually use the conveyor belts to go straight onto the grill. You actually have to use these uh, dumb robotic arms here, not to be confused with the smart robotic arms, which are going to destroy us all, uh, but the dumb robotic arms can go down like so and can move things off the conveyor belt into the adjacent machine, like so. Yeah, this guy's saying the same thing I was going to say. The conveyor belts cannot directly feed into a grill or an assembler, so we need the arm to do it. That's been done. Oh, we also need another arm, like right here as well, I think, to move off the grill into here. But we need a smart arm for this because we only want to take food off the grill once it's fully cooked. You can't take off the grill, for example, like a half-cooked patty. You want to wait until that patty is perfectly uh, medium rare and then pull it off into the assembler. So only smart arms can do that. Here we go. He's saying the same thing again. Boom and boom. Smart arms, notable by the fact that they are orange and not blue. Orange obviously being the best color that there is. And so in here... We've got, again, operation mode. You can change that in the future. For example, if you wanted to have... I can't back out here, but uh, this guy over here on the right, if you wanted this arm to, for example, point this way, or point this way, but then deposit this way, you can do that using the operation mode here. And then uh, this guy wants us to go ahead, and there's quite a lot of specification that you can give to the smart arm. They don't call it a smart arm for nothing. Uh, so you can have it move anything, any ingredient, uh, any finished dish, any pile, or ash pile, sorry, breadcrumbs, burger bun. We want it to cook, uh, cooked. We want it to move a cooked pate. Okay, perfect. Begin. And so we should see food dispensed out of our dispensaries over here. And up here on the top, you can see our level progress. Uh, how many dishes we've delivered, the energy used, and the ingredients used. Our patty is cooking. Look at that. Beautiful. The burger buns are being placed in the assembler. Combining up with the, uh, the cooked patties, which are being moved, of course, by our smart arm. And then sent along our new conveyor belt over and to our... Well, I was going to say our satisfied customers, but this is a test kitchen. Nobody here right now. Eventually, there will be some very happy, smiley customers here. I think they're just... Are they actually just putting that into like a furnace? There's like a furnace over here. They're just burning all of this beautiful food that we just made. Gosh dang it. But here we go. Last burger. And boom! We did it. Success. We spent $18,250 of our allocated $40,000. 16 ingredients used, 130 watt hours, three meals delivered, and zero meals failed, which is pretty great. Now, we do have this efficiency score of 27. I don't think there's anything we can do with that for the tutorial level because it specifically forces us uh, down a certain pathway, but later on down the line, uh, we'll be able to kind of try certain levels again or go back and tweak things to get a better efficiency uh, if we so wish. But for the time being, we can move on to the next level. This guy right here, order, reader, tutorial. Oh, of course. Of course. Here we go. Five orders need to be fulfilled. We need to use less than 500 watt hours, fewer than 50 ingredients, and again, a budget of $40,000. This time, though, we are making the cheeseburgers, no regular burgers. Again, we are in the test kitchen, so all of our contraptions are, of course, going to end up in the furnace over here. Just fantastic. But nevertheless, ah, you're back again. I was just converting oxygen into carbon dioxide, as we like to do, don't we, friend? I do love converting oxygen into carbon dioxide. It is one of my favorite pastimes. I do it all the time. Thanks for, thanks for noticing. It's time to learn about how we can make our kitchens more efficient so we don't waste any ingredients or energy. But first, I need to teach you, I need to finish this kitchen layout. Currently, the layout is situated for plain burgers, but we need to also produce cheeseburgers. It's always a good idea to look at the recipe first. Let's see what ingredients are needed so we can know what machines to place down. All right, cheeseburger, very easy stuff. We get a, a traditional triangle of cheese over on the left side here. Turn that into a... Uh, cartoonish slice of cheese with the holes in. Does any cheese come with holes in like this? I don't know. I've never seen one on my burger, but that's fine. Maybe it's, you know, something that they do elsewhere. And then, of course, all of that combined with the pre-existing setup to make a cheese burger. Fantastic. All right. Wait, this assembly already has two robot arms feeding ingredients into it, which is the maximum it can support. So you can't have more than two things going into the assembler. We need three. If we're adding cheese, we'll need to transport it on the assembler with the same conveyor belt. Mm, okay, so we need to put it... Oh, this is a different... This is a different factory. I thought this was my factory for a second familiar, but it's not. This is, uh... This is different. They look very similar, but this is not quite the same. The robot arm is currently picking up the burger bun. So yeah, right now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have cheese added to this line so that both burgers and cheese come out on the same arm. This is fine. Very, very doable. Boom. This guy's going to dispense cheese. And voila. Pre-sliced. We probably should buy it pre-sliced, right? Is it cheaper to buy it? Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Processor. 
presumably this is gonna change our uh, pre-existing cheese triangle into a uh, into a slice of cheese. And you don't even have to specify actually. This will just automatically process any food you place into it. Okay. And so over here, recipe to follow. I would like you to make cheeseburgers. Okay. So I think we can click start here, but I don't think it's gonna work. Although maybe it will. I don't know. Bun comes out. Cheese gets sliced very quickly. Okay, it looks like this might work because it's coming out at like about the right speed. So we're getting one bun, one bun, then one cheese, then one bun, then one cheese. But I believe the next thing that the game's gonna teach us is how to only have machines start producing or dispensing ingredients when an order is placed so that we don't have just, you know, the machines consistently running, pumping out burgers to throw into the void, right? Because in a real world scenario, you don't wanna just keep making burgers and pushing them out of the out of the door, right? Hoping that somebody will buy them. You only specifically want to make burgers or any kind of food when people order them, right? When people ask to, to have that kind of food. So I believe that is the next little bit of the tutorial here. But for now, we're just burning some uh, burning some burgers, which hurts my soul, man. Hurts my soul. Uh, this kitchen has a floor. It will endlessly produce cheeseburgers. What a waste of ingredients and more importantly, electricity. Misuse of electronics makes me feel sad and angry. Ingredients are constantly being dispensed and the grill is always on. Even if no one has an order for a cheeseburger, that cannot be allowed. We can fix this by placing an order reader to ensure that cheeseburgers are only prepared when an order comes through. Select the order reader in the parts list and place it in the location that you have highlighted, of course. So I don't think it matters where we place this for the most part. I think it's, um, it doesn't matter at all. Obviously for the sake of the tutorial, it has to go down right here. But when we actually start building our own kitchens, I think it doesn't matter really where this goes. Uh, right click on the order reader and set it to detect cheeseburg orders boom and now we can connect i believe up to four parts here which is perfect because we have four parts to connect and so we are going to go ahead and connect it to the cheese dispenser and so we are going to then select perform one action on the right here while an order is pending so whenever an order is set to be fulfilled dispense one cheese pretty easy stuff right is that the right one? Oh no um yeah, this is right, right? Maybe not. Oh no, sorry. Perform action one times on new order is what we're after. After I would have thought, yeah, because this way it would dispense one and then it would dispense the other one if the first burger hadn't been made already. Yes, okay, this makes sense. We're gonna perform the action one time when a new order is placed. Perfect. We'll then connect up the pate. Same deal. We're gonna do one when a new order is placed. And then the same is also true for the burger bun. Go ahead and dispense one when a new order is placed. And then finally, we've got the grill, which is slightly different. The grill is on while the order is pending. This is the one where we want the order to be one and then on while pending. Okay, great work. Now let's see what happens if we press start. On the left is where the customer's orders will appear. I'll simulate some customer orders. Simulate makes me sound almost like a machine. How humorous. So he's gonna simulate some orders. We can speed up here, but we'll go at normal speed for now. And so hopefully, any day now, a cheeseburger order will arrive. There it is. Our machines will all poop out one of their respective ingredients. There we go. And the cheeseburger will be made. Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Fifty percent efficiency. Perfect. We've improved the efficiency of our kitchen. I knew we were the person for the job. Let us begin. You get it? Boom. We need to fulfill five orders, less than four hundred watt hours, which I still don't think has been an issue so far. I think we've yet to actually run into a power limit. Uh, fewer than thirty-five ingredients, and we've got thirty-five thousand dollars in our budget. And the total, uh, we have got to make a BLT, I believe here. Those burgers were a success. The public ecstatically indifferent towards them giving me giving me such feedback as yes it had taste and stop asking me questions leave me alone that sounds like the public honestly i managed to get this place at a discounted rate apparently humans are not keen on working in tight spaces a privilege those stupid machines don't care for now i know what you're thinking fellow carbon-based life form fellow converter of complex proteins what can we do in this limited space well it turns out we'll be able to achieve a lot here. 
we can offer a brand new dish, the BLT sandwich. Pay close attention to the recipe and the required steps. This space looks limited, but you will easily fit in the required machines. Remember, efficiency will be key in your continued, in our continued partnership. All right. So look at this. We finally got some real, real life human beings in this tiny little, uh, to, to, to come to our tiny little shop here. Not quite sure why there's a clock on the wall for the machines that are not going to be able to check the time, but that's fine. So we need to make a BLT. Recipe is two slices of bread, which we're going to toast, one tomato, which we're going to slice, lettuce, which we're going to just put straight onto the sandwich. Again, I, get, I don't know why we buy the lettuce pre-sliced, but we don't buy everything else pre-sliced. Like, presumably, you'd buy, like, either a bunch or a ball of lettuce or something like that, but nevertheless, that's fine. We buy bacon strips. We're going to crisp those bacon strips up, and we're going to dump them out into our BLT. Perfect. So, we have got four ingredients bread tomato lettuce bacon strips two of these need cooking the bacon strips and the toasted bread presumably we could cook these both on the same grill i would assume that sounds right and then the tomato slice elsewhere i'm just thinking about the uh like order we want to place our dispensers in so obviously we're gonna have one two three four dispensers right i feel like the bacon which we're gonna dispense every five seconds but that's fine well we'll tweak that and set up a an order reader so it only dispenses it when a new order comes in not every five seconds uh, but we want that next to the bread because we're gonna cook the bread as well we can hopefully cook those on the same grill over here we want the tomato i guess is the one that we have to actually process and then the lettuce is the very last one here which does not need to have anything done to it whatsoever and so then we need to have that come out and into the grill so I think we do have to have a bit of space here because I'm fairly certain that the arms can't pull directly out of the dispensers. And so I think we have to have some form of conveyor belt that goes like this and like this. Now this guy will have to come one further forward so that we can place our grill here. And then if we go and grab some dumb arms, we can have those go here and here. And that should place both the bread and the meat on the same grill here. Whether or not that's strictly hygienic, that's for somebody else to decide, right? We're not we're not dealing with. I was gonna say Ofcom here, but I'm pretty sure Ofcom uh, don't. <laughs> don't, I don't what's, the, what's the the governing body that determines food standards and hygiene? The Food Standards and Hygiene Authority. We're not dealing with those guys right now. All right, we're just machines trying to make a living in this cruel, cruel world. Okay, here we go, <laughs> Ofcom. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we do need to place down one of these here. I do wonder, can we go like directly in like this? So can we get a smart arm that goes directly like that? I think we can, right? I think that's possible. Now, on the other side here, we of course have to slice the tomato, which is easy. We get a food processor and we throw it down like that. And then with the conveyor belts, the lettuce just comes straight out and goes straight in. And so I think this should be fine. I think we legit uh, don't want that, actually. Delete that. I think we want to go forward forward and in so the lettuce comes out combines in goes in there tomato comes out gets sliced ends up in the assembler the bread comes out ends up on here this could be a problem this could be a slight problem due to the fact that we wanted actually let me see what the options are in here because i was going to say the problem here is that we can only specify that this pulls off like uh cooked food like bacon strips or toast like we can't specify both unfortunately and so i think we're gonna need two arms on this thing now how do i want to do that to put a second arm on it would have to go on this side over here right a second smart arm like this so this arm would pull off the cooked bacon strips like so this arm right here would cook off or pull off, sorry, the toast. So this guy here. And then that all that means now is if we uh, do a little bit of rotation here, delete this, have this guy go this way, and then have this come around and in like so. And I think that's gonna work, maybe. Let's have this guy make us BLTs. And then finally, we're gonna pull out a order reader. Again, doesn't really matter where we put this, but I'll put it like over in the corner for now, just so it's out of the way. And then we'll also rotate back as well because it, it, it's muddling my mind. And then in here, do we have, we've got a few machines here. So we might have to have more than one order reader. But for now, we'll come in here. Order to detect is BLT. 
and we will connect up our lettuce dispenser, which we want to dispense one piece of lettuce when a new order is placed. Okay. We then want to go ahead and add another part, the tomato dispenser, which is the exact same deal. One tomato every time a new order is placed. I don't know why I keep clicking OK. I need to click new connection, which is bread. We need two pieces of bread, right? If I'm not mistaken, this whole one one grill thing might come back to bite me in the backside pretty soon here, but we'll see how this works. We should have enough space on the grill. I think the grill can hold like four ingredients at once. And so perform two actions on a new order should be okay. Let me check real quick. Yes, we do need two slices of bread to make this work. And then finally here at the very end, we're going to come back to this guy. New connection. Boom. We want to dispense one set of bacon strips every time there's a new order. So now we've saturated the number of connections that the order reader can have. I'm fairly certain we need a new order reader, which I'm going to put in the other corner here to connect up the assembler and the grill. So in here, BLT, new connection to the grill. Again, I want this on while an order is pending. And then I want to connect up the assembler, which I think is the same thing. I think we want this only on whilst an order is pending. If it's not, if an order is not pending, we don't want this on, right? This, I think, is ready to go. Let's go ahead and hit start. And hopefully we'll see this work. Oh, no. Whoa. <laughs> Stop that right there. I definitely did not forget to hook up the output here. You madman. Do we need, um... Do we need robot arms to pull this out? I think we do, right? I think we need a robot arm, a dumb robot arm to pull out the cooked food. No. We just put a conveyor belt here, right? Maybe? All right, start. We spent we spent just shy of our um, of our budget here. We were given 35,000. And so if we did try and put like another grill down, we might actually exceed the limit here. So we'll click start. We'll see how it goes. This is where just nobody at all wants to buy our burgers, uh, a.k.a. our BLTs. Come on, someone, please. Oh, this guy, red shirt man. He's coming to buy a BLT. Oh, there we go. He placed his order. All right, moment of truth. Is it going to work? Everything is dispensed correctly. This guy, oh, okay. Stop, stop the operation. Close it down. Close the doors. Tell red shirt guy to go away. I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, so this needs to point forward so that it can pull off the belt. But then inside it, we have to set it to left. I think that's how that works. Try again. We'll speed it up this time so that Red Shirt Man comes a little quicker. Okay, it's Blue Shirt Man this time, but that's fine. We don't discriminate based on the color of someone's shirt. It's quarter past 12, perfect burger time. Here we go, this one's working. It has dispensed two pieces of bread, which is great. Both are on there. One is gonna cook quite a bit before the other, but that's fine, there's no, uh, no points for speed here. There is, however, a point for uh, getting things in the machine, which I have um, certifiably not done due to the fact that this here needs an arm. All right, how am I going to do this? I think all I need to do here, chat, is just move this guy and then put an arm here. And this is also going to be a bit awkward. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this and then going to have this guy point right. And then I'm going to have this guy also go right. And then have a belt here and here. And I think that's going to work. We are over budget. Where can I save money here? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, 1,500 over budget, you know. We could get rid of this. Which is 4,000 in and of itself. That would leave the grill on all the time and the assembler on all the time. Hmm. What if? What if? What if? What if? Hold on, chat. Hold on. It's all... All the pieces are coming together. Can I delete this belt? No, this belt is permanent. I'm going to rotate this. No, I can't rotate that because... I, oh, no, I can. And then we're going to move this guy here. We're then going to have him point left, not right. Okay. Bear, bear, stay with me here, chat. Stay with me. We're then going to delete this guy. We're going to have everything converge on one, one belt. This doesn't save us any money, which you would think were, completely defeats the point of, of what I'm doing here. 
and you would be right in that that didn't save us any money whatsoever you fool isaac um in fact i think it might have cost you money in the in the purchasing of more conveyor belts huh okay hold on we need to honest i think i think we just like i i kind of hate this this is gonna work like if i hit play i'm over budget okay i'm gonna i think i'm gonna delete the order reader man i think i've got to delete the order reader although i don't hmm do i need to delete the order reader no i do not need to delete the order reader right like potentially oh no maybe i do need to delete the order reader no 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 i can get rid of this and then do this how is oh we're so close we're so close how expensive are the conveyor belts 250 250 250 the arm above the grill is not going to pick up the toast. It's facing the wrong way. This one? This one? No, no, um, oh yeah, no, you're right. You are correct. This needs to be facing this way and then going right. That's fine. We're so close. We need to get rid of two conveyor belts. And we're golden, right? Move everything back. The worry about moving everything back is that we're still going to have to put the belts here, right? Like... Oh, then maybe you're right. Let me delete some belts here and see what we can get. So, this guy's coming out. We need to merge. Oh. Have we done it? No. Oh, we're so close, though. I don't think this works. I think, I think this guy has to go this way. Wait, let me... Does this work? I need to know. I assume you have to pump into the back. Right? Oh. Oh, he's a genius. Hold on. Lire has the all of the ideas. You just place the lettuce machine closer, thus giving you the freedom that you need to do this. And I think that works. This is a lot more convoluted than I originally intended it to be. And also our tomato food processor is gone, but that's fine. We'll put another one down like that. We have spent bang on 35,000. Sorry, Ninja is the one who uh, who gave me the lettuce idea. Ninja, you're a genius. Okay, so lettuce comes out, goes in. Perfect. Tomatoes come out, they go nowhere. That's a problem. It's a big problem. The tomatoes are not going to go anywhere. The, the lettuce machine has to go there, which means we're going to be 500 over. Ah! <laughs> How am I fudging up the first level? I the, the, the crazy thing is, I have beat this level. I honestly, um, I think the way that we beat the level is just deleting this. Right? If we delete this guy, yes, this is going to be on all the time. And yes, the grill is going to be on all the time. But I think that's fine. There's certainly a way to do this. You can save a lot of conveyor belts. Are you sure? So if I do this, and we delete this, and we delete this, and we move this all back. I don't know what... Oh, this belt needs to be there. No, but that's not going to work, because we need to have two arms connecting into that drill. So I don't think we can get rid of conveyor belts there. We could get rid of an arm, which we did have there. We don't need we don't need two arms. Flip the conveyor belts? Which conveyor belts am I flipping? On the right side? We don't need all these conveyor belts, I guess? That is fair, actually. That's very fair. Oh no, we but the, but like if I put this here, which was my first intention, like uh, I don't want to do that, I wanna have that straight. This needs to go here, and then suddenly we can't get out. Now I guess we could move this over here and then have the conveyor belts here and here have we done it <laughs> have we have we managed it okay lettuce comes out and it goes right to the end the lettuce just goes straight out and to the end perfect the tomato comes out gets sliced perfect across follows the lettuce path perfect cheese oh sorry bread even comes out gets put on the thing brilliant but uh not burgers bacon comes out place on the grill perfect then the Bacon gets pulled out, sent around. This does not need to be like this. This needs to go left, and we can save yet more money. 
by getting rid of this monstrosity. And then this guy here. No, I, I would like you to stay on normal mode for the time being. I'm trying to select the arm. Please, yes, the arm is going right. I think that's right. I think we're actually $750 under budget. Start. Oh my goodness. Speed up until we get a customer. Our first customer is green dress lady. And then let's see. She wants a BLT. All right, team. Let's do it. The dispensing is working. The lettuce is making its way into the assembler. This is perfect. The sliced tomato is also making its way into the assembler. Perfection. The bacon is crispy. The bread is cooking at different speeds. So one half is going to be slower uh, to cook and obviously colder than the other, but that's fine. Our BLT has been assembled. It's going to be pooped out onto the assembler. Please, we don't need an arm for this, do we? Do we need an arm for this? We need an arm for this. Okay. Okay. This is fine, chat. We're, we're, we're at the finish line. Okay. We just need a dumb old arm. I, th I think we just need a dumb arm. Do we need a dumb arm? We must do, right? Because the dumb arm takes us directly to 35,000. So I'm going to go left with this. Okay. Start again. Speed it up. We've got this, chat. We've got this. <laughs> I will defeat this level. Okay. Everything's out. Everything's assembled. Slow it down. Here we go. The dumb arm is being a good boy and then waiting for the, the BLT. I think it can only take out what's on the outside slot here. So I think until that BLT arrives on the outside, the dumb arm is not going to do anything. It's not going to try pull things out of the assembler. Look at that order complete. That did turn yellow. That I think the person who ordered it was getting a little bit, a little bit annoyed by the time it arrived, chat. But we have done it. We've fully and successfully automated the process of producing BLTs. Now, the first time I did this, I'm fairly certain I did it with just one order reader. And so I just left the grill and the assembler to do their thing. So this is even more efficient than the last time I did it. I think this might be perfect. Maybe. Because, <laughs> like, we've hit the target of, of cash perfectly. Every machine is only on when it needs to be on. And the burgers have been made. It's, it's perfection. Only took one month. I know, right? <laughs> but now it's automated. Now the machines are going to do it forever. This, uh, this town is going to be blessed with infinite BLTs at a bargain price. Have the bread dispense faster, not every five seconds. Ooh, you're a genius. So money spent 35,000. Ingredients used is 34. Our limit was 35, I think. Energy used 313 watt hours out of the 400 we could use. And then meals failed zero. Efficiency 64%. So top tips for an efficient kitchen. Minimize electricity usage. Minimize ingredient wastage. Minimize the kitchen footprint. The fewer machines that are needed, the less electricity required. Mm, okay. And then uh, if an ingredient is required by multiple dishes, potentially use an order reader detecting multiple dishes to dispense that ingredient. Okay. I want to try real quick. I think if I hit retry, it's just going to put me back into my pre-existing... Okay. I want to try dispensing... Oh, five is the lowest. I can't dispense any faster than five, unfortunately. So I don't think we can make it any faster in that regard. Huh. I, I, like I said, I don't. I think this is fine. We're gonna we're gonna exit to main menu and, and move on to the next level. <laughs>